Please. You introduce yourself to all of us. Thank you, sir. First of all, good afternoon. I am Samu Bin Ashraf from District Rahim Yar Khan. My father is a retired school teacher and my mother is a housewife. We are eight siblings and I am the second youngest in Mongol. I studied till my bachelor's from Ahmedabad Khan then I moved to Islamabad and did my master's in defense and strategic studies from Kaizad University uh, the my experience at Kaizad University was very excellent I learned a lot of new ideas and I may, met a lot of people from all over Pakistan because you can find people from all over Pakistan in Kaizad University uh, after that I started working with the research think tank as a research assistant uh, where I wrote two research papers about strategic stability in South Asia, and those are published in, in the HEC recognized journal. Uh, uh, during my stay at Kaizen University, I also remained active in extracurricular activities. I participated more than 20 debates that was model United Nations debates in all over Pakistan, and uh, I secured around 15 best delegate awards in those debates. Uh, recently, I have wrote another research paper that is under peer review that was about. Uh, uh, role of colonial Punjab in World War One, and uh, with special focus on British recruitment strategy in this region. And uh, uh, the qualities which I like the most in my personality are hard working and persistence. Owing to these qualities, I am honored to pass uh, three competitive exams in Pakistan. And that's all for myself. Thank you. So you have qualified three competitive exams in Pakistan. Yes, sir. Okay, tell us. Introduce Pakistan to all of us. Think you are in Dubai and you have to introduce Pakistan to the foreigners. Tell us. So Pakistan is a great country in South Asia, uh, having uh, the fifth largest youth in Pakistan, having one of the largest charity system that is in Pakistan. Uh, the people of Pakistan, they are very generous. Uh, they are very cooperative. And uh, it is uh, the proof of this that uh, one of the largest charity organizations work from Pakistan uh, and there is a uh, world's largest ambulance service that is Pakistan also honored to have world, world's largest uh, ambulance service uh, that is Idhi uh, ambulance uh, a non-governmental uh, uh, ambulance service in Pakistan apart from that the people are very energetic and innovative uh, though there are certain problems with Pakistan but uh, the, with successive uh, hard, hard work and uh, uh, visionary policies, I hope Pakistan's future would be bright. What is the population of Pakistan? So currently, it is about 220 to 225 million. What is the total area of Pakistan? It's uh, 7,96,000 okay, square tell kilometers. Tell me the salient features of Constitution of Pakistan 1973. So first of all, it is a written constitution. Uh, the, the form of government that was described under this constitution is a federal uh, uh, system. Then it is a rigid constitution, uh, it is not easy to amend it. Uh, then there are two houses, bicameral legislature, there is an upper house and lower house. Upper house was created to uh, maintain parity among different federating units. And uh, there were some Islamic provisions which were in, uh, kept in the constitution. And the religion of the country was declared as Islamic, Islam as declared as an uh, official religion of the country. Overall, the whole structure of governance, it was more or less based on the uh, principle of separation of power, uh, three executive, uh, three organs of the government that was decided, legislature, judiciary and uh, executive and then it is a pro, uh, parliamentary form of government uh, rather than presidential form of government. A separate Supreme Court and a hierarchy of the judicial system is also established under the constitution of Pakistan. Welcome to CSP's Academy for CSS PMS preparation. CSS PMS तहरीरी इम्तिहान के तमाम मजामीन की ऑनलाइन और ऑन कैंपस तैयारी के साथ साथ सब्जेक्ट सिलेक्शन, असाइमेंट चेकिंग, क्लास टेस्ट, मॉक एग्जाम, इंडिविजुअल टीचर डिस्कशन और फीडबैक सेशन का इनाकाब किया जाएगा। इसके अलावा FPSC की तजवीज करदा बुक्स से बने मैयारी नोट्स और CSP पब्लिशर की बेहतरीन ब what is the latest in the press about uh, IMF talk with Pakistan? Uh, sir, Pakistan's, due to Pakistan's uh, poor economic performance, Pakistan needs to get a few funds from IMF to, to avoid the uh, threats of being uh, defaulted. 
and but IMF wants to have a, a guarantee that you would have to do certain acts by which we should we would be ensured that you will be able to return the money back to us and for doing so they are telling that you should have to raise your revenue because when you will raise your revenue at the end of the day you would be able not only to come up with uh, money for your own affairs but you would be able to return the money which we are needing and uh, IMF has asked for a few uh, uh, conditions to be met uh, first of all they asked to uh, impose more tax about 170 billion rupees and the government has accepted that then they are telling that you have to uh, uh, go away with the, the subsidies especially on the gas and energy sector the government is still hesitant on that then they are telling that you have to impose taxes on uh, met petroleum uh, on petroleum especially on diesel and petrol but the government is still hesitant on that already they are uh, they have imposed taxes but they are not in a situation to impose more taxes because the political cost of that would be much more for the current sitting government so there is a kind of uh, still there is a kind of deadlock between imf and the current government the talks have ended a few days ago but still there is no uh, confirmation that imf is going to give the required money to pakistan or not Ayran, you tell me how do you see the political scene of the country where we are heading unfortunately there is a political turmoil in the country a kind of constitutional crisis, a political crisis is going on and one of the basic major reason is uh, uh, is that the politicians and the leaders of different political parties, they have prioritized their personal and uh, party interests over national interests and a kind of political victimization is going on. Earlier when PTI was in government, they were following the same strategy of political victimization against other political parties who was uh, were in op opposition. And now when the PDM is in power, they are doing the same against the sitting, uh, against the, op the opposition that is PTI now. So it is a kind of political victimization and in, in doing so, political polarization is increasing. And that political polarization is now uh, having a trickle down effect on the common masses. Now common masses, they are uh, becoming political extremists. And in doing so, political uh, politically extremist people, they people are now unable to bear uh, even the argument of the opponent political uh, parties, so the members of the opposite opponent political parties. So by doing so, the state is again, the so our society is again going to be divided on no political lines. Earlier it is divided on religious and ethnic grounds, and now it is going to be divided into political uh, lines. So if the possible pragmatic solution is not uh, achieved in the near future. Thank you. Uh, Osama bin Ashraf, you have studied uh, nuclear proliferation. Could you tell me what is Pakistan's nuclear doctrine? In Pakistan's nuclear doctrine is uh, based on its strategic culture, basically. I would like to comment on that. Uh, Pakistan has uh, developed nuclear weapons to deter India. And Pakistan's nuclear doctrine based on uh, the threat from our eastern neighbor. And uh, therefore, Pakistan has decided to go uh, to make a clear doctrine of no uh, first use policy that if any conventional or nuclear attack happen on Pakistan, Pakistan is will be using its nuclear weapon. Uh, secondly, Pakistan's no nuclear doctrine is based on minimum credible deterrence that Pakistan will always try to keep their nuclear weapons at the minimum level, but that minimum nuclear weapons would be credible enough to deter any kind of threat from India. So these are two major pillars of Pakistan's nuclear doctrine. So what is it called now? Uh, it is full spectrum deterrence, we call it. Uh, why have we not signed NPT? Well, by signing NPT, we have to uh, disarm ourselves on the nuclear front. And uh, if Pakistan disarm itself, there is a severe uh, survival threat to Pakistan. So Pakistan has linked its uh, ratification of NPT with India. If India would sign NPT and ratify, so Pakistan would also follow the same route. And what about FNCT? Pakistan has also not accepted fissile material cutoff treaty because uh, Pakistan believed that India is continuously proliferation, uh, proliferating its nuclear weapons in the vertical manner. And with the increasing stockpile of nuclear weapons within India, it is uh, a prerequisite for Pakistan to maintain its nuclear weapons on the same level uh, to deter any kind of threat from India. Because now India is moving towards first strike capability, uh, second strike capability. Uh, and if India got successfully the second strike capability, that would be extremely difficult for Pakistan to manage. So if Pakistan signs an FMCT, if 
Pakistan would not be able to secure any kinds of fissile material from any country at the international level. Currently, the IMF team was here. Uh, what is your take on the negotiations that took place recently? On IMF? Yes, sir. Talks are going on. IMF wants to ensure them that we would be able to return their money back if we have to uh, take loan. And uh, unfortunately, Pakistan's expenditures are much more than that of uh, our revenue. And if our revenue is continuously decreasing and our expenditures are continuously increasing, uh, there is no no sane mind would be going to accept that uh, Pakistan would be able to return the money from uh, to IMF. So they are asking us to uh, at least go for such acts that uh, you would be able to generate more revenue. And uh, unfortunately, Pakistan uh, is unable to uh, make them assured that we would be we are going to uh, take those steps with which revenue could be increased. So it is a kind of uh, till now it is a kind of failure on the front of Pakistan. Uh, earlier on, Pakistan was on the grey list of FATF mm. and now it has been removed from that. Firstly, tell me what does FATF stand for and why was it so significant for us? FATF is a financial action task force. It is around uh, 31 uh, members, uh, countries, non-governmental organization. Uh, to counter uh, terror financing and money laundering all over the world. And now they have included another pillar that is non-proliferation as well. Uh, it is extremely important for Pakistan um, to be on the white list because if Pakistan is either on grey list or black list, uh, there would come severe sanctions on Pakistan and there are uh, different international uh, business corporations that would not uh, uh, cooperate with Pakistan. Uh, the, it would directly impact foreign direct investment in Pakistan. And another important uh, aspect is Pakistan's total uh, uh, import-export transactions, they are uh, uh, going through international banking sector. So if Pakistan would not be able, Pakistan is on the blacklist or on the grey list, Pakistan would not be able to conduct its uh, transactions from international banking system. That would again create major problem for a lot of businessmen in Pakistan and other parts of Pakistan who are having business with Pakistan. Give your career a boost with CSSPMS preparation from Civil Services Preparatory School. Join CSSPMS for on-campus and online classes. Join us for your bright future. Civil Services Preparatory School, Jitan Markaz, Islamabad. Register now at 0316-570-1593. Why was Pakistan put on the grey list? FATF uh, says that there are lacunas in our legislative system, uh, in our legal system to stop money laundering and terror financing. There were claims that Pakistan's legal system is not adequate enough to curtail that. And uh, they asked Pakistan to develop certain laws through which Pakistan would be able to uh, curtail uh, people who are uh, taking money out from Pakistan or who are actually sponsoring to uh, terrorist uh, organizations either within Pakistan or out of Pakistan. So why is India not on FATF grey list? Unfortunately, Pakistan's diplomatic efforts are were not good enough uh, uh, as compared to India. India's relations with major countries are very uh, good. And uh, owing to that, India is always getting uh, special privilege uh, in, this, uh, in these kind of agreements and these kind of organizations, such as NSG. Uh, Pakistan is not a member of NSG, but India got a special waiver on NSG. That is because of its diplomatic achievement. Uh, this is a diplomatic achievement for India. Uh, thank you, Osama. <coughs> Osama, uh, what is meant by budget deficit? Uh, sir, budget deficit is a condition when uh, your expenditure in the country increased or uh, supersedes then your revenue. Uh, and in that sense, uh, the country would not be able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, earn so much revenue or generate so much revenue as per its expenditure. So when there is a gap that is called budget deficit. How can we, uh, Pakistan also facing uh, this budget deficit issue like uh, most of your debt, in fact the more than 80% of debt is basically in support of a budget, it's a budgetary support. How can we address this budgetary deficit issue in Pakistan? There are two options, one is by raising revenue, the second one is by decreasing our uh, expenditures. So by curtailing our expenditures on different fronts and by increasing our revenue generation, uh, we can uh, tackle this budget deficit. Okay, uh, on what fronts would you propose 
to decrease our expenditure so first of all we have to look upon uh, on what sectors we are actually expending the more uh, unfortunately uh, our defense budget is on so much increase but again when we see ourselves in the region there is a compulsion for uh, having this defense budget but that can be curtailed to some extent and then pakistan can also decrease its uh, development budget to some extent as well but uh, that would not be a good strategy as compared to increasing your revenue you have to increase your tax base uh, bring more people into the tax uh, sector especially the agriculture sector and uh, uh, other new non filers should be brought into tax base and by doing so we will be able to generate more revenue and that would be a good strategy i think okay but uh, you missed uh, one part that uh, hundreds of billion rupees we are spending on the public sector enterprises uh, don't you think instead of reducing the defense budget because you are also student of uh, nuclear science which will put us in disadvantage in the region which is very hostile do you think now is the time we should go for the privatization of all those public sector enterprises who are becoming a burden on the national exchequer the national budget exactly sir that would be a good option but in doing so we have to keep in mind uh, privatization of such departments which are very much important for national security of pakistan should not be uh, on the card such as railway because when in case of any major war railway plays an important role to link different areas of pakistan so but those uh, enterprises which are loss making and uh, they are actually vital elephant for pakistan those should be privatized okay uh, whenever we see there's a debate on uh, the uh, dismal economic performance of pakistan people say we need to uh, do governance reforms in each sector of our economy what is meant by the governance the governance is actually the the conduct of the the implementation of policy we can say uh, governance is actually to govern every sector and to implement the policies which are being formed uh, for the betterment of all uh, society in in simple words it it could it could also be said the law in action okay let's talk punjabi uh dungiya shama nawaz sahab ne likhi hai ya afsane hai kya social issue address ki unhone apne afsanon mein सर जो मुझे अभी इसमें याद आ रहा है एक तो उन्होंने जो गरीब तबका है उनके बारे में बात की है औरतों के ऊपर इन्होंने बात की है कि जो औरतों के साथ सोसाइटी के अंदर ज्यादती होती है उसके ऊपर जवान लोगों के जज्बात के मुतालिक इन्होंने बात की है जो माशरे में एक बेरारवी की हमें एक लहर नजर आती है उसके ऊपर कहा जाता है कि जो लोग गीत होते हैं किसी भी माशरे में चाहे हमारा माशरा हो या वेस्टर्न माशरा सोसाइटी हो वो आम लोगों की तारीख होते हैं आम लोग हमें सरकारी तारीख में क्यों नहीं नजर आते ये सर दिस इज एक बड़ी डिबेट हमारी हिस्ट्री के अंदर भी है कि अब तक की जितनी भी तारीख लिखी गई है वो सिर्फ रियासत के या हुक्मरानों के नुक़ नज़र से लिखी गई है आम लोगों के नुक़ नज़र से नहीं लिखी गई तो अभी बीसवीं और इक्कीसवीं सदी के अंदर एक तहरीक शुरू हुई है जिसमें जिसको समाजी तारीख कहते हैं या सोशल हिस्ट्री कहते हैं इसमें अब आम लोगों के जज्बात और आम लोगों के एहसास को भी इस तारीख का हिस्सा बनाया जा रहा है जिसकी एक अहम मिसाल अगर हम लें तो पार्टीशन के वक्त पर इंडिया और पाकिस्तान के साथ जो कुछ हुआ उससे हट के जो आम लोगों के ऊपर जो उसका असर आया उसके ऊपर बहुत कुछ लिखा जा रहा है जॉइन सी एस पी वी आर वी बिलीव दीम्स आर आर मिशन सो लेट एस बी योर पार्टनर इन दिस ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव जर्नी एज वी यू विद नॉलेज कॉन्फिडेंस एंड रेजिलियंस रिक्वायर टू इमर्ज एज सी एस एस टॉपर्स Contact us on our given WhatsApp number 03165701593 or visit our website www.csps.com.pk Kya partition ka effect hame Punjabi jadid shayaron mein nazar aata hai agar aata hai to aap mujhe batayein kaun se shayar ne koi shayar is qisam ka kaha ho uski working ke nazar aata ho to misal ke taur par Ahmed Rai ab Ahmed Rai ki tareekh shayari ke andar hame iski jhalak nazar aati hai jab wo एक बच्ची या एक लड़की की आवाज के अंदर वो शेर लिखते हैं कि चुन्नी मेरी लीरा के तीरा बहनो दे वीरो चुन्नी मेरी लीरा के तीरा फिर वो सोनवे बाबुल मेरे या मेरे टूट गए सब माण तेरी पग पैरों में रोल गई मिट्टी में रोल गई शान तेरी इज्जत वाली दीन अज वेख के सब शर्मान तो ये बेसिकली वो जो खातन के साथ रेप और वो सारी ट्रेजिडीज हुई उसकी रिफ्लेक्शन हमें अहमद राही के इस गीत के अंदर नजर आ रही है अच्छा पंजाबी में दो लोगों का अलामती निज़ाम बड़ा मशहूर है एक शाह हुसैन है और दूसरे मुनीर नियाजी है 
شاہ حسین کا تو بڑا سمپل سا علامتی نظام ہے چرخہ انہوں نے بتا دیا جو ہاؤس ہولڈ ایک چیز تھی لیکن منیر نیازی کا علامتی نظام اس کے اندر جن ہیں چڑیلے ہیں ڈینے ہیں خون خواہ درندے ہیں اندھیرا ہے کیا وجہ ہے ان دونوں کو تھوڑا سا آپ ریفلیکٹ کریں ادیب کے اندر ہمیں ریفلیکشن نظر آتی ہے اس کے دور کی یا اس کی پرورش کی جس علاقے یا جس ماحول کے اندر اس کی پرورش ہوئی ہے شاہ حسین کی پرورش جس خاندان میں ہوئی اس خاندان وہ جلاحوں کا خاندان تھا تو ان کی ہمیں عدالتی نظام کے اندر چرخہ نہ ہے پنجابی کلچر کی مثال بھی ہے لیکن منیر نیازی صاحب جو ہیں انہوں ان کی زندگی کے اندر سب سے پہلے نائنٹین فورٹی سیون کی پارٹیشن کا اثر نظر آتا ہے پھر پینسٹھ اور اکہتر کی جنگیں ہمیں نظر آتی ہیں اور اس کے بعد اکہتر کے اندر پاکستان ٹوٹتا ہے تو یہ جو ٹرمائل انہوں نے یہ سارا دیکھا اور یہ کیوس دیکھا اس کی شاعری کے اندر ان کی ریفلیکشن نظر آتی ہے اس کے علاوہ چونکہ وہ جو ادیب ہوتا ہے وہ بڑا نرم مزاج کا بندہ ہوتا ہے تو وہ معاشرے کے اندر ہونے والی جو مسائل ہیں ان کو بھی وہ ریفلیکٹ کر رہا ہوتا ہے چلے آخری کوشچن کہا جاتا ہے کہ حسین شاہد نے بھی اس کے پورنے میں ذکر کیا آپ کو میں تھوڑا سا ایز آؤٹ کر دوں کہ اکبر بادشاہ کا دربار دو لوگوں سے درستا تھا کون سے دو لوگ تھے آخری کوشچن میرا ایک شاہ حسین کی کافیاں تھیں اور دوسرا دلے دلہ بھٹی جو تمہارا Okay, do you see any connection between Taoism and Sun Tzu? Uh, I am not sure about Tao- Taoism, sir. Okay. Uh, why Plato dislike Solon's constitution? I am sorry, sir. I am not aware about Solon's constitution. Basically, that was the constitution of Athens that uh, introduced yes, democracy. I can comment on it if you would allow me, sir. Uh, sure. Uh, actually, Plato, uh, because Plato was too much attached with Socrates and Socrates was given uh, death sentence because of democracy. So, he disliked the democracy because of that. Okay, uh, recently you read a book, Lost History. So, what history is the lost? But actually, it is a book about uh, the golden era of Islam when uh, major uh, scientific reforms, major scientific innovations were being done on by by the Muslims, especially the Ibn Rushd, uh, Uh, especially the era of Harun al-Rashid and Mamun al-Rashid when House of Wisdom was created. Uh, it actually reflects that history that the current European uh, scientific development is actually based on the Muslim developments in the science and philosophy and literature. Okay, what is Mayfair pla- Pact? Mayflower Pact? Oh, no, sir, I don't know. That. Two governing principles of early U.S. states. Two governing principles of early U.S. states. Sir, first they were demanding uh, power for uh, representation. Uh, first principle was representation and the second one, uh, text. I'm talking about the earliest United States states, early colonies. Early col- the 13 colonies before yeah. the independence. Governing principles, two. That was the governing principles from the British side and that is actually yes, colonization yes. and mercantilism. Yes. How Hitler breached Treaty of Versailles? Two examples. There was a condition that uh, the territories were taken over from Fr- uh, Germany, but Hitler recaptured those territories, especially from France. And uh, British and other powers, they showed treaty of uh, a policy of appeasement towards Hitler. Then there was a condition that uh, Germany would not develop military, but Hitler developed not only military, but actually supersede all other available militaries in the region. When Vietnam ended and who played important role? The Vietnam war, is, war was ended in 1973, uh, if I'm not wrong. Objective resolution is Magna Carta of Pakistan. Please comment. Objective resolution was uh, a few principles which were uh, developed by the founding members of Pakistan, especially in Wabzad Ali Ali Khan and his team. It was about, uh, it, it, is, it, it is no part of Pakistan's constitution and no one can actually amend these, the, amend it or remove it from any constitution. Uh, it is about uh, the religion of the country that is Islamic then it is about uh, uh, certain basic fundamental rights that should be given to the people of Pakistan and about uh, uh, the uh, the leader the top notch leadership of the government should be Muslim that is why it is because it lays down the foundation of the future of any constitution therefore it is called the Magna Carta thank you thank you very much sir Batao. You are in a full form. You have accepted the challenge and you are preparing yourself very well. Keep it up 
बाकी वी हैव गॉट ए नाइस पर्सनैलिटी कम्युनिकेशन स्किल तुम्हारे ठीक है नॉलेजेबल काफ़ी सेटिस्फैक्ट्री लेवल है तुम्हारा लेकिन एक कीप इट अप ये जो है ना मतलब यानी यू आर द फर्स्ट कैंडिडेट जिसके बारे में मैं ये कहता हूँ कि तुम प्रिपेयर कर रहे हो आज की डेट में दिस इज हाउ आई फील अबाउट यू ठीक है ना इसको हिम्मत करो की पिटअप अभी तुम्हारे पास टाइम है पिछले अखबार पढ़ो सारे नब्बे दिन के अस्सी परसेंट तुम्हारा इंटरव्यू इसी में ऐसे आना है बीस परसेंट न्यूज पेपर में आना है हाउ डू यू फील कि ये इसी तरह नहीं है बिल्कुल ऐसे नहीं सर अभी टी का इंटरव्यू हो गया जिसके लिए लास्ट टाइम आपके पास हाजिर हुआ तो बड़ा अच्छा हुआ इन्हीं चीज़ों में से था ऑलमोस्ट जो क्वेश्चन यहाँ पर हुए ऑलमोस्ट मिलते जुलते क्वेश्चन अगर डिफिकल्टी लेवल इसका 50 परसेंट था तो वो शायद 90 अगर उसका 90 परसेंट फिफ्टी परसेंट था तो ये 90 परसेंट है वो उन्होंने काफ़ी इजी रखा है अच्छा वो तो मैं काफ़ी इजी लगा इसीलिए हम थोड़ा सा मुश्किल करके रखते हैं ना ताकि यू शुड प्रिपेयर योर सेल्फ दैट इज द ऑब्जेक्ट है देखो ना यहाँ करके गए हो तो वहाँ तुम्हें आसान लगा है कितना वो मेम्बर कितने थे फोर मेम्बर फोर मेम्बर्स बैठे थे तो वहाँ मोस्टली क्या चीज़ें डिस्कस हो रही थी स्टार्ट हुआ था पूरा फीडबैक दो हमें इंट्रोडक्शन से स्टार्ट किया फिर पहले मेंबर ने ओवर पॉपुलेशन पे क्वेश्चन किया फिर राइज ऑफ टेररिज्म रीसेंट सर्ज इसके ऊपर डिस्कशन हुई उधर से नेशनल एक्शन प्लान का मैंने नाम लिया तो उसके ऊपर चले गए नेशनल एक्शन प्लान के कौन सी चीज़ों पर अमल दरामद नहीं हुआ फिर उसके बाद इस्लामिक स्टडीज़ में से हिस्ट्री के जक़ात के ऊपर डिस्कशन की जक़ात की इंपॉर्टेंस के ऊपर बाकी ज़्यादातर जो डिस्कशन थी वो मेरी डिग्री पर थी क्योंकि जो चेयरमैन थे वो लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल थे तो उन्होंने वही स्ट्रेटजिक स्टडीज़ के ऊपर न्यूक्लियर पॉलिटिक्स इंडिया पाकिस्तान फिर यूएस रशिया और इन्हीं के ऊपर तकरीबन 10-12 मिनट डिस्कशन की एंड के ऊपर जनरल साहब ने एक क्वेश्चन किया है कि व्हाट इफ़ यू सिलेक्ट इफ़ यू हैव बीन सिलेक्टेड बाय बोथ पीएमएस एंड सी तो आप क्या ज्वाइन करेंगे सो so, इधर आके उन्होंने अपना कंक्लूड किया एक नैया साहब थे उनका मैं कुछ पढ़ गया था उन वो ब्लॉग्स लिखते हैं डॉक्टर हैं तो वो वो उन्होंने अपने ब्लॉग्स में से सारे क्वेश्चन किए तो उनके बीस पच्चीस ब्लॉग्स थे तो वो उन्होंने ऑलमोस्ट वही क्वेश्चंस किए तो वो अच्छे आते थे ब्रेग्जिट पे उन्होंने पूछा ब्रेग्जिट का इंपैक्ट यूके पे ईरान में क्या हो रहा है उन दिनों चाइना में वो प्रॉब्लम कोविड की वजह से चल रहा था उस पर क्वेश्चन किया रशिया यूक्रेन पे किया कार्ल मार्क्स पे पूछा था ये कुछ चीज़ें चलो यार तैयारी करो जब इधर जाओ तो मेम्बर्स को पढ़ के जाना जी सर अभी मस्त नो स्ट्रेटेजी तुम्हें पता चल गई है आपने उन्हें बताया था अपने सी के बारे में उन्होंने जो हमसे परफॉर्मा पहले फिल करवाया था उसमें और आपने जॉब क्या दिया थे सांसद डिस्कशन का इसमें मैंने कहा था कि अगर मुझे सी एस एस का डिजायर्ड ग्रुप मिल जाता है तो आई वुड ज्वाइन लेकिन मैडम आप यू आर अ विनिंग हॉर्स थोड़ा सा फोकस आप शार्प कर लें अपना uh, आपने होमवर्क अपना किया हुआ है लेकिन ये है कि जिस तरह आपने अपने फेवरेट पर्सनालिटीज आई ऑलवेज टेल कैंडिडेट्स के इट्स नॉट अबाउट द पर्सन इट्स अबाउट यू सो यू हैव टू नवाब इन योर फेवरेट पर्सनालिटी पीपल कैन स्टार्ट आस्किंग यू अबाउट दैम नवाब ऑफ जूनागढ़ का आपने लिखा हुआ है वाई हिम जूनागढ़ का क्या रोल था यू नो ऑल दोज क्वेश्चन कैन कम इफ यू आर और फिर सुनसू का सुनसू जो है उसका आपको सारा पता होना चाहिए कि वो किस कॉन्टेक्ट में आपने आर्ट ऑफ वॉर तो पढ़ी होगी इट्स ऑब्वियस क्योंकि उससे ही आपने लिखा है सुनसू लेकिन सुनसू कौन था क्यों उसने ये किताब लिखी क्या उस वक्त चाइना के डायनामिक्स थे डू नो कि फॉर्मर चाइनीज एम्बेसडर वॉज ग्रैंड डिसेंडेंट ऑफ सुनसू सुंदी वॉन्ग जो था वो सुनसू का डिसेंडेंट था तो पीपल विल स्टार्ट आस्किंग और जो पर्सनैलिटी ज़्यादा ना लिखो एक या दो ही लिखो बट देन उनकी सारी डायमेंशंस पॉलिटिकल पर्सनल सब आपको आना चाहिए सिर्फ आर्ट ऑफ वॉर से सुनसू आपका फेवरेट नहीं हो सकता सुनसू क्या था कौन था एक शख्स था किस हिस्टोरिकल कॉन्टेक्स में था वो सब आपको पता होना चाहिए हमने इसमें सवाल नहीं किया आपसे बिकॉज ऑफ पॉजिटिव ऑफ टाइम but my recommendation would be that focus on that whatever you write obviously you know that you'll be asked questions on it so be prepared to defend it sure wish you all the best ek ek just comment wo apna jo introduction hai na be careful jo apna research ka hai na usko zyada na play karo 
تو اللہ ہماری خواہش ہے کہ آپ سلیکٹ ہوں لیکن یہ ہے کہ آپ نے اپنے کو ریلیکس نہیں کرنا اسے آپ نے ٹوینٹی پرسینٹ اوپر جانا ٹھیک ہے کیونکہ ہماری تو گریڈنگ ڈفرینٹ ہے یہ تو میٹر کرتی کرتی ہے لیکن اصل میٹر وہ کرے گی جو وہ گریڈ کرائیں گے تو تھوڑا سا مزید اپنے آپ پہلے آپ سے ڈفیکلٹ کوشچن کرتے تو پریشان ہو جاتے تھے اب بڑا ہنس کے ان کو بھی آنسر کر رہے ہوتے ہیں تو یو آر ڈوئنگ ویری ویل آئی تھنک یو آر ڈوئنگ ویل بٹ کیپ اٹ اپ چھوڑنا نہیں ہے